Hi everyone. Hey everyone, it's Aaron Lori with Plan Free. We're still hanging out here in Puerto Escondido. It's been about two and a half months. So we thought we'd share with you a sample cost of living and what typically that's looked like for us in the first two full months that we've been living here. We've had some comments in some of our other videos in the area as well as people we meet on the street asking us what the cost of living is in Puerto. How much is it to buy fish per kilo? What's, what are rents like? So this video is for you. We've literally had thousands, okay, tens of you <laughs> ask us uh, about these items. So we're going to take the time and illustrate what it looks like now. If you like what we've talked about in this video today, click the like button. If you want to help support the channel for free, click subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. So today we're going to cover three main monthly costs that you, you can't get away from. Food, transportation and accommodation. So we'll start with accommodation. That's always going to be your choice, but we'll start with what our exact physical costs were for accommodations, our transportation, what we chose, and then what our monthly food budget was for December and for January. And we'll give you an average and all that. I'm kind of the numbers girl, the detail-y budget kind of girl. He's the macro thinker, big picture thinker. So I'm the one who kept the receipts and tallied them all up and stuff. So um, I'll be the one doing most of the talking today. For accommodation, um, just check our channel. We have a handful of other videos that we've done on accommodations. We looked extensively and we still continue to keep our uh, toe in the pool on that one. Anyway, check out those other uh, videos because those ones show you a good smattering of what we saw when we first landed. And then it shows you the one that we ultimately decided on. Okay, so we ultimately settled on an apartment. Our preference was to find a one bedroom apartment with an actual door on the bedroom, but those are very hard to find. So we finally found this bright studio and there's no door on the bedroom, but it was the best of the best at the time. And when you need a place to live, you finally decide on one and settle for it. So we're happy. It's very bright. It's got like seven windows we can open on three of four sides of the apartment. Um, and so it's a private, we don't share with anyone. It's a studio apartment with air con. Uh, there is no pool at this property. Uh, it's in the Bacocho area. So for us, that's very family oriented, nice residential, quiet streets. And the price was 8,500 pe 8, pesos per month, which is Canadian dollars, 530 Canadian dollars per month. For this apartment, all utilities are included, internet is included, and our landlord also includes, includes a weekly cleaning and laundry of all the sheets, all the towels for the bathroom and the kitchen. We should mention that this is, you know, our illustration of what the cost of living looks like. In, in our specific case for accommodations. Now, everyone out there is different. So if you had a higher budget or comfortability level um, cost-wise, or let's say lower, you have the ability to do that in either direction in this uh, town of Puerto Escondido. So if let's say you want uh, more amenities or spend more money, higher budget, larger space with more uh, private spaces, you can do that. You can, uh, you can go into an all-inclusive resort or you can uh, uh, rent an entire house, whether that be by yourself or share it with somebody, what have you. So you can upscale from what we're illustrating here, no problem. Now on the flip side of that, let's say you're, uh, you're more budget conscious than us and you wanna spend less. Well, there's other ways to do that as well here. You could uh, rent uh, just as someone's room, for example, in a house, or you could rent more of a shared accommodations, whether it be sharing an entire house or a hostel type situation mm -hmm. or multiple different shared type of scenarios available here. So just know that this is where we've landed budget wise and space wise, but you can scale it up or down from there. Yeah, we feel, we feel we're middle road. Our tastes are to have something a little fancier and spend a little more money. We just couldn't find on time because we needed a place to live. So in, in our time frame, we just couldn't find that one bedroom and spend a little more money for it. We're finding maybe a couple of those now, but the deal's already done. We've rented the place. So you can totally scale it down for backpacker type accommodations. Or if you have a big family, lots of kids, you need many bedrooms, there are those houses available. Mm -hmm. We can't possibly cover every single scenario we just want to give you what our one couple with no kids and no pets, what we found um, as an example for accommodation cost of living in Puerto. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, our second uh, big ex big monthly expense is transportation. So just like accommodations, Errol will probably talk about how you can scale that up or scale that down, but I'll describe what we decided to do. Uh, our scenario was that we were not sure if we were going to spend our just three months in Puerto and then head up into the hills for three months um, or stay six months in Puerto. If it was six months here, that would have been easy. We probably would have bought something and sold it or, or what have you. So because we didn't know how long we were staying for three months, we just decided to rent. Also, the timing just worked out that we met a very nice young man and hit it off and we just, we just got each other. Um, he's just a, a great guy and gave us a really smoking deal on a scooter. And so we had to pay all up front, uh, but we paid 7,500 pesos for a three month rental, which comes out to 470 Canadian dollars for three months. There's so many reasons to rent a scooter. Uh, we were hesitant. You can get into a little bit of trouble with uh, shifty sand on the road and gravelly situations, but we went with the scooter because of a few things. We can zip in and out of, um, not traffic, but in a, around the topes, the speed bumps, we can get to and from things faster. We've been in many, many traffic jams around here and we were really able to just skirt the side and get through traffic fast. Not to mention the cost of the rental is just a fraction of what a car rental would be. And then on top of all of that, gasoline. We fill up every 10 days and I think we're paying about 85 pesos. Necesitamos gasolina. Premium? Yeah, it's alright. El premium funciona hoy? Sí. Señor? Sí? Okay. Muy bien. Uh, lleno, por favor. Sí, gracias. Do you have money or do you? I have money. You do too? Okay. I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. I have. I grabbed uh, a 100. Oh, and here they accept the tarjeta también, ¿sí? Visa y Mastercard. Visa y Mastercard. Which is just a little over five Canadian dollars to fill the tank. Muy bien, and we gracias. scoot everywhere for 10 days. Yeah, so we're, I think we're at about uh, a little over $16 Canadian per month for gas right now, which is pretty economical. Yep. So again, similar to accommodations, everyone, you can scale up or back your transportation costs. So again, the scooter is where we've landed and the prices that we're illustrating is according to that. But you could spend more on, let's say, anywhere from a motorcycle to a quad to a car, a truck, SUV, you know, whatever your budget or needs might be appropriate for. On the flip side of that, you can scale it down. You could rent or purchase a pedal bike, for example. You could take advantage of the local taxi cabs or the local bus systems, anywhere from colectivos to urbans or uh, any multitude of the public transit system is very popularly used here. You could also consider walking. Uh, we see a lot mm -hmm. of people do it and we know from experience now that largely Puerto Escondido is walkable. Mm -hmm. And in those few scenarios where you were in a situation where it was a little far and you didn't want to walk, those other options are still available. Taxis, colectivos, what have you. So you could almost reduce your transportation costs to almost nothing if you're walking scale it up a little bit with the steps that I've talked about. The Colectivos, uh, we have not taken them, but there are 10 pesos per ride. So you get on at whatever point and you ride it until you're ready to get off. When you hop off, you just pay 10 pesos. So it's as short or as long as you want the distance to be, but that's a super awesome way to get out of the heat and cover some good distance. Yeah. And the Colectivos run from here to pretty much everywhere you want to go and back but we do not claim to be experts. Don't please don't ask us in comments. Uh, we do not claim to be as experts on the routes. It's actually at this point still quite confusing. I'm really thankful we have a scooter because they have a bunch of names at the front of the collectivas and you kind of hope it's going your direction. Um, anyway, smarter people than me have figured out the collectivas. Okay, our third major expense, which we didn't really know if we should decide yes or no, should we include it because we eat in Canada, we eat, wherever we travel, we have to eat. So we figured maybe that's just equivalent to everywhere. But you know, it, it isn't. We wanted to show cost of living in Mexico as compared to where we're from. And it's, it is significantly less. I would say 
depending on if we're buying organic beef or at home or whether we're uh, fasting several days a week, you know, there's so many variables, variables with your food budget. I would say back home in Canada, our budget's right around 900 Canadian dollars a month to maybe a thousand if I'm getting some specialty items. Here, I'm gonna break it down for you. Our, our average over the last two months living in Puerto has been about 600 Canadian dollars. And that is eating out almost one, at least once to almost every meal out every day. Yeah, I'd say we're probably on average uh, eating out more than 20 times a month when you include, sometimes we eat lunch out, every now and then we'll eat breakfast out, not that often, but most of the time it's dinner. With the combination of those things, I'd say we're probably eating out more than 20 times a month right now. It's a lot and it's really great. <laughs> Although the best meals are still being had at home. Thankfully, she's a good cook. Thanks, honey. They're you're pretty, welcome. they're pretty good. And you know, it's funny because you're so pumped up the first few weeks, you're like tacos, yes, every night. Mexican food. After a while though, you're like, oh man, can you make those lazy cabbage rolls? Can you make something that we're familiar with, right? A beef stew or whatever, so. Okay, so groceries, there's uh, options here. You, there's one big major grocery store called Shedrawi. Everyone here calls it Shea or Super Shea. So at the Shedrawi, it's kind of a big grocery store department store. There's like a clothing section on one side with like electronics and houseware, baby stuff. And then there's a, a wine and beer and alcohol section and then your regular meat, produce and bakery and everything. So that's your one major grocery store. Uh, a good option to go and we'll talk about that in a second and then there's your local markets uh, like they're like a big covered uh, market where many vendors come together and you can buy your veggies and your meats and your fish and your flowers and your candles and your <laughs> flip-flops so it's like a big farmers kind of market except it's not all farmers market stuff and we'll talk about that in a minute too then there's your really local markets. You're walking down the street and you look and there's a hole in the wall, it opens up and somebody has a fruit, fruit and veggie stand. So there's just levels of um, purchasing. Um, there's just uh, multiple options to purchase and it depends on where you live. If you don't wanna walk to the big farmer's market, then maybe you, your little corner market with some fresh fruits and veggies is good enough for you. So the reason why Shea, the big supermarket, is good is there, there's going to be things there that you can't find anywhere else. They have a big import aisle, which we're going to show in our video here. They have a, a section where you can, where you can find um, even things like uh, sushi, sushi rice, uh, ginger in a bottle, all the imported fancy stuff, some fancy olives, some, some fancy olive oils, coconut oils, mm -hmm. quinoa. Fancy granola and chocolates you might not find anywhere else in this small t Mexican town. Um, and, and the grocery store is kind of a one-stop shop too. Like we all know what a big grocery store is. You go there and you can get almost anything in one, one fell swoop. So it's convenient, right? Um, we have noticed that the prices are higher. Maybe you pay for that convenience and you pay for that air con. But let's say a um, uh, cucumber is seven pesos at the big grocery store it's maybe five pesos at the local market. So it's not that big of a difference if you wanna do that one-stop shop and go for those special imported items that you can't find anywhere else. But still, you're, you know, even between five and seven pesos, that's somewhere in the neighborhood of 20%. Mm. So if you extrapolate yeah. that across your whole grocery bill, you're probably looking at it mm, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20% difference to shop at Shea compared to shopping at uh, Benito Juarez Market, for example. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a really good point. It is. So we've heard some people say that the prices are double for fruits and vegetables and stuff at Shea. I have not seen double, but I have seen more, but marginally more. And then also, how long are you staying in, in Puerto? Are you staying here two weeks where, meh, it's just easier to go to Shea? Or are you living here or staying three, six months where you maybe want to pinch here and there and, and see how low you can get your budget just for giggles? Right. <laughs> Stuff like fish and seafood we have not seen at Shea. I can't even think of a piece of fish that I saw there, but you can get your pork, chicken, and your beef. And it's all the cellophane uh, wrapped up, probably mass produced um, offerings, much like back home. Nothing organic that we've seen at Shea. Okay, so buying from the larger markets, there's actually two large markets in Puerto. We kind of thought there was only one for the longest time called 
Benito Juarez market. Um, but there's Zicatella market, which is also very huge. So in these two markets, I'll call them a large farmer's market because m many vendors come together, as I mentioned before, the offerings are bountiful. Like our eyes, we were just like, oh my God, mountains of produce and beautiful colors everywhere. It's just very exciting. Just know though that those are more mass produced. They may have pesticides and, and things on them to get that crop to look just so perfect. Totally fine. It just depends on what you're into. We eat some of that stuff and we also eat some organic. It just depends on what we can find that particular day or week or yeah, when I have time to go to an organic market or not. So, but just know that when you see those bountiful, beautiful um, stands and everything's looking the same, it's probably not, um, locally grown locally grown but that said in those big markets along the edges and you can ask the vendors organico oh una pregunta papa uh, hay frutas y vegetales organico aquí organico, no. organico al mer mercado aquí si sí. si ¿Sí? donde es por favor and you can tell when you look at it it looks a little different and it's stuff that maybe they collected around their their finca their their yard so the one thing we the one thing we did find at the local big farmers market Benito Juarez market is fish and seafood woo plenty of it too yeah so people have asked us in comments and on other videos can you guys do a cost of living so we did film some fish uh, vendors um, at the markets and then a little in a few more minutes, we'll, t we'll show you the footage that we got right on the beach um, from the local fishermen when they come in in the morning. So the fish and seafood at the markets, we got prices in the, inside the market and then right outside the market on the streets and shrimps ranged anywhere from 170 pesos to 190 pesos per kilo. That's about $10.50 Canadian to about 11 1180 Canadian. Fish was also 150 to 180 pesos per kilo. You buy, you can buy them um, whole and some of the vendors will clean it and fillet them for you and, and that's an awesome value added. You just pay for the whole fish up front, they'll clean it up and give you the edible parts in a bag. Mm -hmm. And that's handy for us because uh, neither of us are really so into filleting fish anymore, but we prefer to eat fish fillets rather than trying to pick through an entire fish and dealing with all those bones, so. Okay, so on the topic of fish and seafood, we got a tip from someone that you could go down to a local um, playa here and buy fish directly from the fishermen. Wow, we were all over that. We get up before sunrise, we're down there all eager, it's dark out still. Oh. We're watching the fishermen come right up on the shore with their boat. So we're like, man. We're gonna save so much money. And the scene was cool, man. It was high energy. People are like, they're doing their thing. People are in there yeah. grabbing fish. And we're like, yeah, we found it now. That part was the coolest for sure. Okay, so when we asked the prices, they were 150 to 180 uh, pesos per kilo. It was literally the same prices at the market. So I'm not sure. If maybe we missed something or maybe we didn't look in the right places, but right. we didn't really see a lot of price savings when we were down there. We didn't. And we did not see the variety. The, the fishermen would come in and open their big coolers and it was all a bunch of little tiny guys. That's not our speed for fish. We're more into like a bigger red snapper or something of, of the sort. And all those prices were the same as at the market. So for us, we're just going to go to the market and tell you that the prices were so darn close. Just go to the market. The vendors there are wonderful to talk to, interested to see a, a white face and have someone speak a little Spanish and they'll clean it up for you. They'll give you the fish head if you want it to boil some um, chowder at home later. Yeah, now if any of you local Smarty Pants types that have been hanging around in Puerto Escondido for quite some time have additional information or tips and tricks on um, buying mm -hmm. seafood directly down there on the beach from the fishermen, Feel free to jump in the comments below this video and add uh, your experience to it. Okay, so the last little sub point on the food um, portion of our monthly expenses would be restaurants. They really vary. There's a million options in Puerto, which is super fun and super cool. Uh, restaurants really range though, from kind of touristy, higher priced, kind of mid-ranged, local kind of restaurants, and then literally hole in the walls, mama, mamacita cooking on the fire, 
great food. So they really range. We found a range of prices at the touristy restaurants. They range anywhere from 90 to 300 pesos for a meal. Again, is that just a burger? Is it like a steak with side dishes kind of thing? So that's about the range. Okay, so some lower key uh, local places, which we love to frequent also. Um, you're gonna pay between 50 and 70 pesos for a meal. Probably not the same quality as me of a meal. For example, your burger might be 100 pesos to maybe 150 pesos for a burger. Your spaghetti might be somewhere between 40 and 80 pesos, but again, it's more simple than your fancy restaurants. So in summary for the food, um, for us, we had a December, a full month of December of eating uh, at home and out, and then we had a full month of January. Our full month cost for food for December was the equivalent of 672 Canadian dollars. And our full month of January was 538 Canadian dollars. So when we average those two months out, we come to about 600 Canadian dollars to eat in and out, shopping all over, not even thinking about it. We're hungry, go out. It was, it's been wonderful for 600 Canadian dollars for two people. Mm -hmm. All right, in summary, with our three major components that we've touched on, accommodation, transportation, and food, our average monthly cost of living comes to accommodation of around $530 Canadian, transportation of about $170 Canadian, and like Lori just mentioned, our food costs average out at about $600 Canadian. Mm -hmm. For a total monthly cost of living of the items that we've talked about, of Canadian dollars, $1,300 per month. As you continue to gather information about Puerto Escondido, we recommend you watch this video next. If you like what we've talked about in this video today, click the like button. If you want to help support the channel for free, click subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. And we'll be continuing to make content for you about our misadventures in Mexico here over the next four months or so, as we're staying here for six months in total this year.